And we're going to now talk to Asli Tosuna from Turkey. She's assistant professor in communication faculty at in Maltepe University, Istanbul, planning research into cancel culture. So Asli, could, could, welcome, and it's fantastic to have you on. Could you tell us something about the situation with gender identity in Turkey and how did you realize it was a threat to women and girls and who's promoting or opposing it? Now, uh, there have always been uh, debates on the exclusion or inclusion of trans people within the feminist movement in Turkey. Uh, however, um, now um, the, the new um, discussions and language is a little different from past. Uh, so I can say that the recent rise of gender identity activism in the West has been reflected here in its new terms in the last few years. And translation of foreign articles, of course, were very effective in bringing these discussions here. And LGBT organizations have included this issue uh, on, on their web page. So um, they, uh, they, they follow and they um, give place to these uh, politics in their circles. Um, uh, in the last 10 years, I can say. Um, but the issue has been brought to the agenda of many feminists due to the reflection of these discussions on social media. And these discussions sparkles uh, uh, after um, a few uh, gender critical academicians um, posted some comments about the, these uh, situation in uh, Western countries uh, about this new gender identity ideology in 2018 and in, I think, 2019. They posted comments about it. And after they uh, posted these comments, uh, uh, many LGBT organizations published statements and declarations against them, uh, some opposing articles have been published in uh, alternate media. These academics um, have been accused of being transphobic and called as terps, uh, trans exclusionary radical feminists. Over time, a large of number of gender critical people began to be labeled as terps, including me. <laughs> and there were even those um, people who prepared uh, tariff lists on social media. Uh, these people uh, also uh, started to put uh, pressure on many groups and organizations uh, which organize events related to feminism or LGBT. Uh, so they, they try to prevent from uh, the people who call tariffs to speak uh, on these issues and um, uh, they try to put censorship on them also. In addition, um, social media discussions on the subject, in addition to them, many messages such as insults, hate speech, threats of violence against so-called terror people were posted on social media too. Also further, um, there is an award uh, which is called genetically modified tomato awards, which is given to homophobic and uh, transphobic people or institutions annually by Istanbul Pride Committee. People vote for candidates in various categories on the grounds that they are homophobic or tra transphobic. Uh, last year in 2025, feminist academicians and writers were nominated for a, a transphobic special award alongside uh, G.K. Rowling. Uh, however, so th this is the general uh, situation about gender identity politics in Turkey. I briefly uh, explained them. However, these discussions, uh, which mostly focused on language and definitions, remain quite absurd compared to the traits faced by women and LGBT individuals in this country. Uh, President Erdogan decided to withdraw Turkey from Istanbul Convention, 
Thousands of women, including trans women, are killed by men every year. So there's an ongoing femicide in Turkey. And also uh, hate speech and discrimination against LGBT individuals are on the rise, uh, worse than before, before. For example, there have been a demonstration in Wazit University. Uh, LGBT protesters uh, were also in those uh, demonstrations. Uh, they were protesting against the rector appointed by Erdogan. Uh, and uh, these people, LGBT protesters, were identified as terrorists, and they are tried to be criminalized in the eyes of the public. And uh, so I can say that we have very serious problems and uh, gender identity politics are not on the agenda of most women in, in Turkey. Uh, these concepts are important from West, are uh, unfamiliar to many people. So when you, uh, when you talk, when you ask someone in the street uh, and say that um, uh, what cisgender is, probably most of the people uh, don't know, won't know what it's about. And also these debates uh, do not even take place in mainstream media, or it's not even in the agenda of mainstream politics. So therefore I can say, uh, of course, this is my observation also, th this issue is mostly handled uh, by feminist and LGBT circles in Turkey. And it's also been discussed in some prestigious university campuses. And uh, it appears from time to time in the left-wing newspapers. What then affects women's lives mostly in your country? And what, where does your government stand in terms of women's rights? What's, what's their position on the women's sex-based rights? The, the femicide is our agenda for a long time uh, because um, government and other um, other institutions are not uh, uh, doing anything uh, for it. So there are many organizations uh, working about it. And um, of course, these femicides mostly, uh, mostly they are based on uh, patriarchal discourses. Uh, the the killed uh, women are mostly women are mostly killed, uh, especially. Uh, a high percentage of them are killed because they they uh, want to divorce from their husbands or they want to separate uh, from their uh, boyfriends. And um, but this traditional family structure is still strong in Turkey. And unfortunately, the, the government, um, this conservative and Islamic government, they are mostly giving importance uh, on uh, family, the traditional family values. So they are trying, they are using a discourse uh, which says uh, the rights of uh, women, individual rights of women and LGBT people are a threat to the traditional family, Turkish family. Are you in a feminist organization or working on sort of feminist feminist issues in your in your work? Could you tell us about that? Uh, I'm not a part of a feminist organization. Uh, I'm I'm personally interested in and uh, researching about uh, feminism and gender issues. Uh, but in my university, uh, I'm part of a, a women's uh, a research center. But I, even there, I can say that this gender identity politics is not our issue. Uh, we are mostly uh, uh, studying or uh, trying to change some uh, rules on uh, sexual assault in campus, university campus. So we are mostly focused on this kind of problems which young women are uh, being exposed to. How's that going? Is that work uh, succeeding in Turkey? Are you, do you have support from the young women in campuses and from academics? Well, of course, uh, academics and young uh, women are, of course, uh, supporting, but it's hard with university um, uh, managers. I mean, especially I'm in uh, working in a private uh, 
private university, not a, a state university. And uh, most of the university is now trying to get well with government. So for example, uh, we have to, we couldn't put this center's name uh, as uh, uh, gender studies or something uh, because the head of the uh, university's uh, institutions uh, in Turkey, now I don't remember his English name, uh, he, he say that, uh, he gave a speech and said that there's no such a thing as gender. And uh, so we had to put our name as Women and Family Center, uh, Study Center, something like that. So there is a pressure on universities and, and we try to uh, be difficult to take action and we try to be difficult on our language use for not to get too much attention. Asli, do you think things are getting better for women or worse in Turkey? I know that's difficult, but... I think it's getting worse, yes. Yeah. Why is that? Mm, well, because of the ideology of this government, because they are trying to bring back the very old kind of um, uh, values, which feminists feminist and women have been struggling for a long time in Turkey and they, uh, and they gain many valuable things. But now this government is trying to go to the past, go to the history. Uh, and they, they have that, um, that funny vision of uh, reviving the Ottoman, uh, uh, Ottoman uh, nature and um, history. So they have a vision like that 